Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and in this video, we'll be disassembling some of the major steering components on the 1943 Willis MB. Starting with the drag link that has been removed from the steering box in a previous video, the drag link is connected to the bell crank, which is connected to the front axle with a pin, and the bell crank will turn each tie rod to opposite sides of the wheels. The tie rod ends are connected to a left hand and right hand steering arm that is connected to the steering knuckle on the axles. And as those tie rods are turned back and forth by the bell crank, very simply, your wheel will turn in or out. I'm going to remove the ball plug from the drag link. First step is to remove the cotter pin. I've created a special socket simply using a piece of flat stock that I welded into the back side of a socket and I ground it down to be like a large flathead screwdriver so I can insert it into the plug and turn it pretty easily. Handy tool to have. There is a specific tool for this but this one works perfect and you can make it easily in your shop and I'll go ahead and remove the large ball plug. There's some internal parts inside but this is removed now so I can easily remove it from the ball on the bell crank simply by pushing down on it and remove the seal, the rubber seal and the dust shield from the ball. And there's a dust shield. This is the bell crank side of the drag link and I've removed the actual ball plug from the end. Is that, that there for reference? And I'm going to need to use a magnet to get the remaining parts out of this because there's so much grease in here. And inside the magnet, we'll pull this out slow, you will find this is a ball seat. And then we have, and then we have the spring, and then the spring seat. The tie rod ends are connected through the bell crank and held in place with a castleized nut. The castleized nut allows for a cotter pin, or in this case it looks like a nail, to be fastened through the bolt so that castleized nut cannot come out. First step we'll do is we'll remove this pin. We'll now remove the castleized nut off the tie rod end. You see the castleized nut to allow for the cotter pin to go through. There's a hole that's drilled through the tie rod end. Then using a simple pickle fork or ball joint separator, whatever you'd like to call it. I'll insert this here, right above the bell crank. Tap it with my hammer. And you see the tie rod end is separated out of the slot of the bell crank. I'll repeat on the opposite side. Working on the driver's side here, and I've got the wheel turned outwards for easy access. I've got my steering arm, and again we've got a smaller castleized nut here with a cotter pin in there. And then we've got our tie rod end here connected. I'm putting grease in there. Remove the cotter pin. Remove 
castleized nut. Using the pickle fork, we'll remove our tie rod end from the steering arm. Repeat the same process for the passenger side. And as a note, the passenger side tie rod is the longer of the two. I'm coming at these tie rod ends. I don't know if I mentioned it when I took off the first one on the driver's side, but I'm coming at these tie rod ends with my pickle fork almost perfectly perpendicular to the tie rod. If I don't, I would wind up hitting the back of that brake plate and I wouldn't be able to put my pickle fork all the way in to remove the tie rod end. Got the tie rod end separated. I'm going to show you the steering arm there and the brake line shield for the axle. And I'll leave those on for the time being and then we'll remove those when we actually do the disassembly of the front axle. The bell crank itself is held onto a pin by a castleized nut. And there, once again, we've got a cotter pin that goes through the top to hold it in place. And there's a lot of interesting little components inside there as well. So we'll go ahead and disassemble that. We're going to remove the cotter pin. The castleized nut should come off pretty easily. There you see that. Remove the dust seal. Remove the washer, and we should be able to lift up on the bell crank and remove it from the shaft. With the bell crank removed, we'll take a look and we'll inspect this ball here real quick. This is a heavily weared item on this particular piece and part, and they get oblonged and football shaped. That one looks pretty good want to show you what's actually inside the bell crank here. So we've got on either side a grease seal. And there's the other grease seal. And then inside we've got needle bearings. Now you could use a press to remove those bearings, those needle bearings from the inside. But a simple way is I'm just going to use a 5 8 inch socket and a hammer, and I'm just going to gently tap them out. I've got the bell crank resting on a piece of 2x12, and I'm just going to use this socket and tap out the bearings. There's one. I haven't done any damage to it. And there's number two. Now granted, if I had a shop press here at the shop, I could push that out with a shop press. And would I recommend beating those bearings back in there with a socket? Not necessarily. But you can see that I've removed those and haven't done any damage to the bell crank or my socket either. Just a way to get them out. I'm going to use a punch to drive out this tapered pin from the casting on the axle. And I'm coming at this one from the actual side of the differential. starting to come out there. There's our tapered pin. You get a look at it, you can actually see the taper in it. Now we get to the fun part. Will this shaft come out easily? I'm going to use my brass drift from the bottom. I guess I just got lucky there, but that came out pretty easily. And you'll see here on this shaft, there's a machined indent where that tapered pin locks into it as such. This is a problem area 
a lot of guys and myself included have had tough times removing these these have a tendency to rust on there and they're almost impossible to get out sometimes and you can use heat and it, it just takes some patience I've been soaking all these components with a penetrating catalyst for a long time thank you for watching I hope you found it helpful and enjoyable if you'd like to follow along with us with the restoration of the 1943 Willis MB you can do so by subscribing to Team G503 on YouTube and I don't normally do this in these videos but a couple of the guys who follow these videos and I, I love you guys you fantastic bunch of guys and I love every second every comment you got to make all the time every time but I posted a picture of these hats that Dan Pentecost from Joe's Motor Pool sent me now yeah, maybe about a week ago and I got a couple dares oh I, I dare you to wear that in one of your team G503 videos and Darren Scott okay well here's the thing Joe's Motor Pool is carried by Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. We find those Jeep Parts to be very, very high quality, affordable, and I don't think you can beat them out there. So, hey, got the Joe's Motor Pool cap on. I got a few of them, and I only believe there's like half a dozen in the whole world, so who knows? We might do a special promotion down the road. But Joe's Motor Pool, A-OK -okay with Team G503. Until next time, keep it safe and happy jeeping.